Good morning, fellas, and welcome back to Me Plays Game, the show making local stops wherever we feel like. My name is Dash, and New York City subway system is one of the most expansive in the world. No other metro system can match its 472 stations. But have you ever wondered how long it would take to visit all of them? That's what we're going to find out today, and my friend Matt and I are here to take you through the world record progression for the subway challenge. If you were hoping for a video about sandwiches, eh, maybe another time. If this is your first time here, hi, what's up? I'm Matt. I mostly do speedrunning videos on this channel, but I also do progression videos for Rubik's Cube World Records. But I'd also be down to do more subway videos if you fellas want more of that. About 20% of this channel's viewers watch our videos with closed captions, so as usual, English subtitles will be available. Alright, let's get started. Depending on who you ask, visiting every subway station can mean one of a few things. There are three different challenges that were defined by the Amateur New York Subway Riding Committee in 1966. To complete a Class A challenge, you need to travel to every stretch of the line in the system, going between every station. For Class B, you have to stop at every station. There's a very subtle difference between those two. Imagine this scenario. You're at Wall Street on a two train, and you've already visited Borough Hall two stops away, but not the next stop, Clark Street. For a Class B challenge, you'd be allowed to get off at Clark Street and take another train back the other way, but in Class A, you'd have to go back to Borough Hall, and that's because that section of track between these two stations wouldn't be accounted for otherwise. This makes Class A slightly more time consuming than Class B. A Class C challenge just requires you to pass through every station, not necessarily stopping at them all. This takes the least time out of all of them, because you can use express trains to skip tons of stations. As an example, this stretch of the Lexington Avenue line is served by express 4 and 5 trains, as well as the local 6 train. In a Class C challenge, you can take the 4 or 5 between 86th and 125th streets, skipping 4 local stations without having to come back. But for Class B, you have to take the 6 at some point to hit all the local stops. We'll be looking at records set under Guinness World Records rules, where you do a Class B challenge with one major modification. For an ANY SRC subway challenge, you have to complete the whole ride on a single fare, meaning you can't exit the subway in the middle of a run. But Guinness allows you to leave the subway and run or take the bus between stations. A lot of the records we'll be looking at today won't take advantage of that though. The first world record recognized by Guinness was set on June the 1st, 1966 by Michael Feldman and James Brown. Hey, 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 not so fast. In May 1940, Herman Rinke became the first person to visit every station on one fare. It took him about 25 hours to visit them all, back when a subway ride only costs 5 cents. Today, the subway fare is 2.75. I'm sad now. This isn't recognized by Guinness, mostly because they didn't exist back then, but we figured we should mention it. As for Feldman and Brown in 66, they toured the whole system in 23 hours and 16 minutes hitting 491 stations along the way, but that number will fluctuate throughout the video. Some stations opened, and some stations closed. They mostly just closed, but what can you do? A little over a year later, on August 3rd, 1967, seven people teamed up to lower the record to 22 hours, 11 and a half minutes, including 16-year-old Morgan Chu, the only one listed by name in the Guinness Book. This time, Chu and his team only needed to visit 475 stations, and on October 8, 1973, Meyer Wiesen and Charles Emerson had even fewer. They set a new record by visiting 463 stations in 21 hours and 8 and a half minutes. In this seven-year time span between these three records, nine stations on the Myrtle Avenue line, the entire 3rd Avenue line, the Culver Shuttle, and five stations on the Jamaica line were closed, and that makes 31 in total. In that same time frame, only three new stations opened. Grand Street, 57th Street, and Harlem, 148th Street, a net loss of 28. Yeah, not a lot of subway stations get built these days. Oh well. Actually, can we talk about the 148th Street station for a second? The station isn't actually on 148th Street, it's on 149th. They changed the name to 148th to avoid confusion with two existing 149th Street stations in the Bronx. Which would be all well and good if there weren't six stations called 23rd Street? Why go out of your way to change this one? On December 12th, 1988, Rick Temple and his friends Phil Vanner and Tom Murphy took on the challenge, one day after three new stations opened on the Archer Avenue lines in the Jamaican neighborhood. They visited 466 stations in 29 hours, 47 minutes. Yeah, we know what you're thinking. We'll get back to that in a second. Yes, their trip took 29 hours, 47 minutes, and 12 seconds, but it had a few hitches here and there. 
They hoped to do it in about 27 hours, but service problems forced them to go to Main Street on the 7 line twice, among other issues. This next bit isn't really relevant to anything, but there was an LA Times article written about this run, and I just think it's fun how it specifically said they drank orange juice throughout the day. This will be on the final exam. Yeah, can I go ahead and ask you ahead of time to curve the grades on that? Denied. Dang. Like we mentioned, this run took place right after some new stations opened in Jamaica. So we also wanted to share a fun fact we learned while researching this video. For most of our lives, we thought the neighborhood was named after the Caribbean island of Jamaica. But as it turns out, the names of the two places have completely different etymologies. Originally, the neighborhood was called Yamiko, a corruption of the Lenape Native American word for beaver. The Y sound spelled with a Y in English is spelled with the letter J in Dutch. So when Dutch people started to write about it, the spelling with a J became prevalent. As a result, the Y sound was eventually replaced with the J sound, which is how the neighborhood ended up being pronounced Jamaica like the island. Speaking of the island, its name came from the Taino language, independently from the neighborhood. They called the island Zamaica, which meant land of wood and water, or land of springs. And that also eventually became Jamaica over the years. This record was a full eight and a half hours longer than the previous one, set by Wiesen and Emerson 15 years earlier. It still counts as a record because whenever the number of stations changes, any previous records are invalidated, which we'll see come up a few more times as more stations open and close. Not a lot of people have taken on this challenge over the years, which makes sense. Spending a full day on the train is probably most people's nightmare, which is why so far in this video, no one has actually beaten anyone else's record. They've just set a time to beat in a brand new category. Kevin Foster was about to change all that, and this guy rocks. To celebrate the 85th anniversary of the New York City subway in 1989, he decided to spend 85 full hours riding the trains, completing the subway challenge along the way. He became the first person to actually beat someone else's record, knocking three and a half hours off of Temple, Vanner, and Murphy's time. His 26 hour, 21 minute, 8 second journey is the longest standing record to date. But believe it or not, the subway challenge was just an easier thing he decided to do while working on a much bigger project. What was that bigger project, you ask? Biking across the Great Wall of China. He spent May and June of the next year becoming the first person to accomplish that feat. When Foster was eight, he had an accident that left him in a wheelchair for four years. Doctors didn't think he'd ever walk again, but he overcame the odds. Between that, the logistical challenges of getting permission to ride across the wall in the first place, and just the fact that no one had ever done this before, it's an achievement almost no one thought was possible. He had some time to kill before his China tour because he originally planned to do it in 1987, but he had to postpone it because he was hospitalized after being hit by a truck. Foster went flipping through the Guinness Book of World Records looking for another task to take on in the meantime, which is where he found out about the subway challenge. Three days after Foster completed his record, the 63rd Street line opened, connecting Roosevelt Island in the East River to Manhattan and Queens with three new stations, which are served by the F train today. The Q train also serves the station on Lexington Avenue. That brought the total number of stations up to 469, but nobody set a record for this iteration of the challenge. In 1995, another station closed Dean Street on the Franklin Avenue shuttle, a train that connects to three other lines and seven other trains in Brooklyn. That brought down the total number of stations to 468, and the record still went unclaimed for a while. But on December 28, 2006, a group nicknamed the Subway Six decided they had something to say about that. Stefan Karpinski, Bill Omarosa Jr., Michael Boyle, Brian Brookmeyer, Jason Laska, and Andrew Weir were classmates at Regis High School in Manhattan. Omarosa had always been a rail fan, and Karpinski recalls that we used to be awestruck when Bill would be able to randomly name the seventh stop on a particular route, but that was child's play we later realized. Hey, Dash, if a two train leaves Beverly Road at 8.13 a.m., when would it arrive at Intervale Avenue? I don't even know, man. Also, you spelled Beverly wrong. He's right. Uh, these pages are blank, though. Ah. Here's the actual script. That's another weird thing, by the way. There are two stations on Beverly Road, but the name of the street itself used to be different depending on where you are. East of Flatbush Avenue, it used to be spelled like this, and west of Flatbush, it's spelled like this, and the names of the stations reflect that, too. Nowadays, the street is spelled with three E's the entire way. We're getting off track here. And they never bothered to change the name of the station on the 2-5? Lame. Bill had been thinking about breaking this record since high school as well, but he didn't get around to it at the time. The topic came up again at their 10-year reunion in June 2006, and Amorosa assembled his squad. <laughs> I just saw the dirtbag thing. Oh, okay. Alright, nice job. The team, consisting of one guy from each of the five boroughs and one from New Jersey, spent six months preparing for the run. Karpinski and Weir showed up a few minutes late, 
to start the run, and they hit a few other snags along the way. Crowded trains and conductors who don't really care about trains being exactly on time in the middle of the night were some of the problems they cited. Regardless, they finished with a time of 24 hours, 54 minutes, and 3 seconds. Pretty much all the records so far were done on a single fare, although Guinness rules allow you to leave the subway to run or take the bus between stations. While that was an option, the Subway 6 decided not to take advantage. Karpinski later described it as something that seemed unsporting, so they did the whole thing on one fare like most people who came before them. Hey Matt, are you a G-Train virgin? Uh, a what? A G-Train virgin. It says here in this article that Karpinski and two of the other guys were before this run. I mean, I guess so? I wouldn't say it like that, though. By the way, I am not a G-Train virgin. I actually took the G about a year ago. So yeah, it was fun. I actually liked the G. Top tier line right there, gotta say. We've got a few more 468 station records to go, and the next one took place in January 2009. Matt Farisi and Chris Solars knocked a full two hours off the Subway 6's time. They entered the record books with a time of 22 hours, 52 minutes, and 2 seconds. In order to figure out a route, you have to pick the right place to start and the right place to end, then connect the dots in the middle. So you might think about ending on stations like Pelham Bay Park on the 6th or Flushing Main Street on the 7th, since those are pretty far away from everything else. These guys decided to finish at Canarsie Rockaway Parkway on the L line though, which is unlike most of the other records in this video. Nowadays, that's a less viable place to end because a free transfer opened up nearby, between the L at Livonia Avenue and the 3 at Junior Street. So you can just take the L the other way and start hitting the 3 train stations. Upon reaching the last stop, the first thing Solar said was, I'm going to the bathroom, which, by the way, is a thing pretty much every article we read brought up. That's a fair concern when you're spending a full day in the subway, especially when only about 10% of all the stations have restrooms available. But like, for some reason that's not something I'd think would come up in like, all the sources we went through for this video. A 20 something hour ride is pretty much guaranteed to have some hiccups, and this one included a long delay on the G train in the middle of the night, as well as a suspicious package delaying trains around Union Square. As the attempt went on, Farisi says, we went from having perfectly synchronized the trains to missing every one. There's always announcements on the trains about how if you see something, you should say something, but someone actually said something this time, and it wound up really costing these guys. One other fun fact, Solars actually hasn't taken the train to work since 2003. Still got a soft spot for the subway anyway, I guess. He's been running instead for the last two decades or so. This is one of nine times he's broken a Guinness World Record. Some of his others include running 77 miles in 12 hours on a treadmill, running a half marathon in an hour 18 while pushing a double stroller, yes, that's a real record, why not, I guess, and visiting 250 pubs in 24 hours as part of a team of 13. So yeah, this guy rocks too. Guinness requires a lot of evidence for the subway record to count. You need a watch that tells the time down to the second so you can write down the exact time the doors open and close at each station in the logbook. You also need to take pictures of every station that are time stamped and have a witness see the start and end of your run. It's also a good idea to get signatures from people on the trains because you can submit those as a list of witnesses as well. That's one advantage of doing this challenge in a group like most of these guys did. It makes it easier to split up the work. Yeah, some people take pictures, some people work on the logbook, some people fall asleep, it's great. I just went to sleep. All right then. One thing I found interesting was how the Subway 6 pointed out that they specifically avoided caffeine and alcohol, but Solar said he stayed awake with three cups of coffee. Yeah, be thirsty or risk needing more bathroom breaks. I guess that's up to you to pick your poison. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, water's basically just poison for this run. Another five years passed with no new stations opening, but in November 2013, six British guys named Steve Wilson, Martin Hazel, Glenn Bryant, Peter Smith with a Y, Annie with an I James and Adam with an H Fisher shaved half an hour off of Farisi and Solars' record. James and Wilson are also the most recent record holders for the London Underground's Tube Challenge, where you do, well, basically this, but in London. They visited all 270 stations that were open at the time in 15 hours, 45 minutes, and 38 seconds. Hazel is a former Tube Challenge record holder as well, so these fellows were the first three people to set Metro Challenge records on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. These guys started their attempt at 3 a.m., and most of the other runs we've looked at start in the middle of the night as well. That's for a couple of reasons. Even though trains are less frequent running every 20 minutes or so, there are plenty of other benefits. For one, it's less crowded, meaning you can get to your next transfer more easily without bowling half the city's population over. Since fewer people are getting on the train, the doors will also close faster at night. It's also easier to get pictures, since it might be harder to get the right angle with people in the way, especially since the name of the station needs to be visible. Another reason is that during late night hours, most trains run local. 
Since you have to stop at every station for the Guinness record, express trains aren't all that useful, unless you're using them to pass stations you've already hit. These fellas finished with a time of 22 hours, 26 minutes, 2 seconds. Would have been really cool if they were a tad bit faster though. A record of 22, 22, 22 would have been pretty rad. That record didn't wind up lasting for very long though, because in January 2015, Matthew Ahn took another half hour and change off the record. He finished with a time of 21 hours, 49 minutes, and 35 seconds. Six months earlier, he'd received an email from a friend, which consisted of a link to an article about the previous record, and two words, beat them, because they knew Ahn was into geography and maps. After two days of working on spreadsheets, he found a route that would at least beat the current record on paper, and he'd gotten his theoretical time down to 21 hours flat. He did this with the help of the worst thing I've ever read, the subway itineraries. Beloved by Toni Morrison is a close second. You'll see why I call these the worst later on. In order to get the most accurate hypothetical time, he used the timetables to determine when trains would depart and arrive at each station, which gave him a rough idea of how long each trip would take, as well as how long he'd have to wait for the next train. His first attempt was on September 10th, but he and a partner gave up about 15 hours in because of bad luck. He tried again two days later, and it was just under two hours short of the record. Unfortunately, he failed another attempt in October, finishing just two minutes too slow. Han wrote a long blog post about his quest to complete the challenge and break the record, where he says, A wise man once said that hell is trying to board an Astoria-bound NQ train at Queensborough Plaza at 5.15pm. That person probably never had to simultaneously comply with Guinness requirements. Arn was attempting this on his own. He had to do the pictures, logbook, and witness signatures all on his own. A little while ago, we mentioned how the Subway 6 specifically didn't drink alcohol for the challenge, and you know, that kinda seemed like a no-brainer. Updating the logbook and taking pictures every few minutes is hard enough. Could you imagine how miserable it'd be doing that drunk? Dear God. Side note, the year after Ahn completed this challenge, the W train came back from the dead, so now that train goes to Queensboro Plaza instead of the Q. Also, may I suggest the following revision to that quote from the blog? Uh, sure. Ah, oh, very good. Ahn talks a lot about the people he talked to and overheard during his attempts, including how he ran into a friend and an old professor over the course of his attempts. Also, this one kid who made fun of their friend for thinking they could get into college. That's not nice. The Staten Island Railway isn't necessary for this challenge since that's considered a separate system for the NYC subway. But the day after completing the subway challenge, Ahn headed down to Staten Island to log all the stations there anyway, like a nerd. Because he is a nerd. Okay, he said that, not me. Wow, so am I. He knocked quite a bit of time off the record, but there were some hiccups along the way, especially on the F train. Normally, the F stops at Bryant Park and Rockefeller Center, then heads up to 63rd Street and into Queens. But after delays at Bryant Park and Rock Center, the train wound up being detoured to 53rd Street instead, which is normally only served by the E and M trains. That messed with his route, so there was still room for improvement. Later that year in September, a brand new station opened up on the 7 line, 34th Street Hudson Yards in Manhattan. That brought the total number of stations up to 469, but it also meant that Ahn's previous run was no longer valid. So who wound up taking it? Yep, it was this mad lad again. Ahn became the first and only person so far to set a subway challenge record more than once. Despite there being one more station, he managed to beat his previous time, clocking in at 21 hours, 28 minutes, 14 seconds. The New York Times made a short video about his second record. Go check it out after this video, link in the description. One thing we mentioned earlier is that Guinness's rules differ slightly from the NESRC's because with Guinness, you're allowed to transfer between trains outside of the subway system. According to the rules, you can either run between any two stations or take a public bus. Other modes of transport, like having people drive you or renting a bike, are off limits. Would teleportation be allowed? Eh, probably not, but who am I to say? I'm gonna call John Guinness to find out. This is a deck of playing cards. Ahn was also on Jeopardy in 2013, but he wound up finishing last with a score of negative $1,600. That also meant he didn't take part in Final Jeopardy. Unfortunately, old Jeopardy episodes are like, impossible to find because they're rarely re-released, so we don't have any clips to show you. Luckily, there's a website called J Archive that has the clues and data from pretty much every episode, so we used that site as our source for this little tangent. What wound up doing him in was losing $8,200 in the category Year He, Year He, when they gave you a historical event and you had to provide the year it took place. Matthew got the first two clues right, but lost $4,600 on the Daily Double, then another $3,600 on the last two clues. 
David Lloyd George signed the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, and George Orwell finished the manuscript for 1984 in 1948. Matthew's answers for these clues were 1918 and 1949, respectively, off by one year on two clues in a row. Not what you like to see. Uh, just a side note, he went by Matt with one T on the show, but we called him Matthew for this bit because, you know, my partner in crime for this video is named Matt with two T's, so there you go. Anyway, Mr. Ron did much better than I would have done on Jeopardy. Respect. For what it's worth, while we were revising the script for this video, we went over the clues he missed, and we both would have said 1918 for the Treaty of Versailles one as well. Do with that information what you will. He also ranked every Cleveland Browns loss between 1999 and 2015 from least bad to worst bad. The link to that blog post is in the description. A few months later, after On Second Record, three new stations opened up on 2nd Avenue on the Q train. There are now four stations called 96th Street. I am sat on the internet. That brings us to the present day, where there are 472 stations and still no record holders for this iteration of the challenge. Who will be the next person to give the subway a run for its money? Hmm. I might know a guy. Oh, that's neat. Do I know him? Hello, everyone. My name is Jasmine Tyler Martin, and I'm announcing my candidacy for New York City Mayor. My name is Dash Martin, and yes, I will be attempting the Subway Challenge. Huh. Uh, Matt, behind the camera here, told me about the challenge in 2019, and ever since, I've been hooked. Let's get the show on the road. Teddy is also here. What's up? <laughs> yeah, so we went through the train's timetables to plan out a route, and let me just tell you, they're an absolute nightmare to read. Let's take a look at the A train as an example. You want to find the first train that starts its route after midnight? Great, where do you think you'll find it? Page one, right? Sure, here's one that leaves the terminal at 12.40. Except, no, that's wrong. This is a shuttle train, so it doesn't actually travel the full route. Nope, the first A train of the day is all the way down on page six, and it leaves at 12.02. The timetables also don't even show all the trains. A lot of the time they'll just be like, yeah, this train runs every like seven minutes or so and call it a day. So we also had to use Google Maps to double check our timing, which for some reason has more complete data than the actual MTA website itself. Yeah, we could have just used their trip planner, but uh, uh, wait, yeah, why didn't we use the MTA's trip planner? They let you calculate walking times and everything. Oh well, hindsight is 2020. Everybody wish the Scoofus Maloofus good luck in the comments. I'm going to bed. Oh, alright, uh, good night. Anyway, this is kind of a weird time to do this challenge because right now the new stations on the queue don't really connect to anything. The next phase of the 2nd Avenue subway line will add three more stations, and it'll also connect the queue to the 4, 5, and 6 trains at 125th Street and Lexington Avenue. That would bring the total number of stations to 475, and it also makes the first half of the route we've planned out a lot easier. But we'll probably be in nursing homes by the time those stations are open. Matt pointed that out during a conversation about the run, then decided shortly after that 472 is a cooler number than 475. Stay tuned to Me Plays Games because we're going to be making a follow-up video about my attempt in a few months. Till then, subscribe for other content from us and our friend Elias, and we'll see you around. Good night, fellas, and sleep well.